And the Word was made flesh and made his dwelling among us. In Ireland, we have a, a tradition called the Shauna Key. The Shauna Key is a storyteller. And um, before the advent of uh, television, even be, before the advent of radio, Shauna Key was the one who would uh, gather them around the, uh, the family room or even the community room, and he would tell stories. He had the incredible uh, ability to be able to tell the same story over and over again without missing a single detail of the story. It was part of the oral tradition of, 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 of old Ireland. Um, and it happened even before Christianity got there. So the ability to be able to tell story is embedded in our culture. Um, in fact, most all of our cultures have an oral tradition of passing on the stories. Uh, and and the precursor to the Gospels and this, all these stories, they had, maybe not called Shauna Keys, but they were the ones who told the stories over and over again. In fact, the four Gospels existed orally for some 60 to 100 years before they were ever written down. They existed orally for 50. Can you imagine that same story told over and over again? And, of course, that's what we do every time we come to Sunday, right? We come to tell stories. Uh, why? Because story has power. Story has life. Story uh, has a way of encapsulating what it is that we are and who it is that we are, or more important, whose we are. You see, we gather every Sunday to tell the story of God and to tell the story in particular of who Jesus Christ is. But most especially today, we gather to share the story of Jesus Christ. Because today is the day we remember and we share the story as he been born among us. And it is a powerful story that the Savior was born among us as a little baby boy. Now, like, there's so many elements of the story. I could be here for hours talking about breaking open the so many powerful parts of the story. But there are two elements I just want to focus on today that are worth highlighting because they're so powerful. First of all, that the Word became flesh. He dwelt among us. He came to be one of us so that He would show us the way and that He wanted to, to everyone to know from all eternity onwards that, that the God loves humanity so much that he became one of us, that, that there's a part of the human condition that is divine. And that's a beautiful part of the story. The other part of the story is that, um, that I want to highlight a little bit is the story we read last night at the, at the um, vigil, and we read, you know the story well, that Jesus, uh, Joseph and Mary are looking for a place, and there's no room with them at the end because the inn is full, and they have to give birth to Jesus in the stable, surrounded by, by animals. And, and the, the idea that there's no room in the inn is a powerful metaphor for not just that generation, but for every generation. Because the truth be told is, all our hearts are full of lots of stuff. And, and our, our minds are competed constantly for attention. And, and so we have to make room for Jesus. We have to make room for the story of God in our life. Because here's what, it will fill up with all the other stories that are out there. Because there's tons of people who are trying to compete for the stories of our lives. And they want to insert their story into our lives. And so we have to work hard at this, keeping the story alive. That's why we come not just here on Christmas, but we come every single Sunday to continue to tell the story. Uh, there's, there's a woman called Brenny Brown. She's a social scientist. She writes some great stuff. But she wrote about, and it's a term I'd never heard before, and she talks about um, story stewardship. Now, I've heard of financial stewardship. I've heard of time and talent stewardship. But I've never heard of story stewardship. But it's beautiful. And why is it so powerful? Because, because stewardship talks about the work of having to hold on to something and to use it for its best purposes, whether that be fine, treasure, time, or talent. 
But story, we have to do the same thing. We have to work at this. We have to hold on to it. And we have to care for that story and so that it carries. See, so here's what the competing story out in the world is there. Is when we tell the story about little cute baby Jesus, they all say, yeah, yeah, nice story. It's just a story. It's just in your head. It's not real. There is no God. God is not real. You just made that up to try and make yourself satisfied. And the problem with that is, you see, we can't convince them because they don't see it. What they see is what they see. But what we can do is testify to what we see, like John the Baptist does. Testify to the light in our lives. So, it's it. so here, here's an example. So I look out in the world and I see God is here all the time. But let me put up this sign. Let me just say. So let's say we all look at a sign that says this. God is nowhere. Right? So the next similar, this is the next slide is what everybody in the, wor- in the world will see. They say God is nowhere. But see, as people of faith, this next slide is what we see. God is now here. The exact same words. But what we claim is God is here. In this baby Jesus, God's right among us, and we, but we have to make room for that. We have to work hard to hold that together because it just doesn't happen. And so what are we to do? Well, we have to make room for the story and then share the story. And then we have to live the story. We have to become the story. So, so where do we go with this? Well, look, first of all, we need to tell the story at home that we believe. And then we need to become that story and believe and, and hold on to the story of other people's lives. You know, Christmas is not easy for some people because they've lost loved ones. Uh, Christmas, in a sense, Christ came among us for especially the people who are broken and wounded and hurt because they're the ones he cared for the most because they're the most wounded. So how do, can we make room for them in our lives? Like, for example, like is there some, somebody in your life, whether it's uncle or aunt or grandparent, that you can reach out to today and call and, and tell them how much you love them? Maybe you haven't spoken to them all year. Maybe there's a person in the neighborhood who you never see, but you're worried about it. You, you haven't seen. Can you make a phone call today and just, or go knock on the door and say, Merry Christmas. Here's, you know, some food. I'm just thinking of you. Make room in your heart for that story, that one person who was hurt. Um, make room in your heart for the, the, those who are homeless, who are broken, who are hurt. How could our hearts not be touched by the millions of Ukrainians who are, who are without power and electricity, the millions of our brothers and sisters across the country in the cold? But that's what it means to live the story of God, the story of Christ, is to make room in your heart for these stories. I want to close with, there's this beautiful song written by uh, Casting Crowns, and, and it's just a beautiful song talking about making room in your heart for the story of God. Uh, let's finish with this. It, it's just a beautiful story that Jed and Robbie and Tim play it. A family hiding from the storm Found no place at the keeper's door It was for this The child was born To save a world so cold and hollow Sleeping town they did not know That lying in the manger low A savior king who had no hope Has come to heal our sorrows Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to write His story? Shepherds counting sheep at night Do not fear the glory light You are precious in His sight God has come to raise the lowly 
Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to write His story? You can come as you are. It may set you apart when you make room in your heart and trade your dreams for His glory. Make room in your heart. Make room in your heart. A mother holds the promise tight. Every wrong will be made right. The road is straight, the burdens lie, for in his hands he holds tomorrow. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to write his story? You can come as you are, it may set you apart, when you make room in your heart and trade your dreams for His glory. Make room in your heart, make room in your heart, make room in your heart. Make room in your heart.